In this video we'll introduce you to the very basic concepts of the view box control. So let's go ahead here, we have an existing view box and first we'll go ahead and run it so we can see here that this text here, this is v1, this is v2 and this is v3 is the HTML that this view box is rendering and then when I tap on um, the uh, HTML there you can see that I'm getting an event handler that says v1 and you can also see that that um, uh, first item that I clicked on has become selected and then when I go here and I say get value we're executing the standard UX component get value method and it's telling us that the value of this view box control is currently v1 and now I'm going to go here and do a set value and set the value of this view box to v3 and you can see that when I do that basically the um, uh, third uh, um, item here in this view box gets highlighted. So let's go now and take a look at what was going on here behind the scenes. So first of all we'll go over to our view box uh, builder here and we can see that in the view box layout we've just um, uh, created three simple divs. So this is as simple as it gets. You can see here that the uh, the view box data source here is set to HTML that we're going to define now and so here's the HTML that we're defining and so we've got three divs that say this is v1, this is v2, this is v3 but the important part here is to notice that for each div we've specified two additional attributes a5-item and a5-value so all three of these divs uh, specify the same item name but they all have different values so the first one has a value of v1, this one has a value of v2, and this one has a value of v3. So these items, this item 1 here is defined in the items uh, pane over here. So there's our first item called item 1. And we've specified that this item is selectable, which means that if you tap on uh, any HTML that uses item 1, uh, the uh, tap target becomes selected and then the CSS class that is defined by selected is applied to that div so you can see here we've got a class in our CSS here called selected and that basically just specifies a color of red then you can see we've also specified that this particular item item 1 has a on click event and the on click event is just going to alert this special variable V which is the value uh, in the a5-value attribute. So let's go again now and run this and when we run it we can see that when we click for example on this um, middle item over there the message box comes up and says um, v2 which means that the value that was specified in the HTML in the value attribute so if we go back over here we can see here that the value attribute specified v2 so that's why our alert showed v2 and then this particular item over here we applied when we clicked on it the selected class was applied in uh, which caused that row to go red so basically click over there you can see the, ro the row goes red because the selected class got applied uh, to that item. So while this is a very very simple example it does indicate some of the key concepts of the view box uh, namely uh, that you can define these arbitrary items and then in the HTML layout that uh, defines what the view box uh, will actually display you can use the items by using the a5-item attribute and you can use uh, you can specify values that are passed to the event handler when the user uh, um, invokes an, an event um, on the item. Thanks very much for watching. In the previous video we showed how the HTML that the view box renders can, can be statically defined. So for example you can see here on the data source tab here we've got the view box type as HTML and then here's our view box layout. So this uh, HTML that the view box rendered is uh, defined at design time. But the um, HTML that the view box renders can also be generated dynamically by merging data into a template using the alpha client-side templating functionality. 
So let's go now and take a look at this next view box over here. And you can see that in this view box, basically we've specified that the data source of our view box is data and we've chosen um, static JSON. We could also be making queries against a uh, SQL database or a NoSQL database. But in this case, we've just uh, specified static JSON, and we've got a very, very simple JSON object here that just has two properties, name and city. And then um, to specify the actual view box layout over here, you can see that um, we've uh, used the genie now to generate the layout for us but if we go look at the layout behind the scenes we can see that the layout is not HTML anymore uh, but it's an HTML template that has placeholders for the data uh, um, for the fields in the uh, data object so um, you can see now if we go ahead now and we render this we can see that basically what gets rendered is the HTML that results from merging the data into the template. So if we go back here and go back into design mode and open up the builder here and then switch back to the genie, we can see that we have our two fields there. Let's just start from scratch. So we'll delete those two fields and then say add item. And if we go now and go over to our data controls, we can see there are the two fields in our data source name and city we can just go ahead and add those and so now those get added and then if we go look at the freeform editor we can switch to the freeform editor to actually uh, manipulate the HTML template so for example if I go here and type in say B and then a closing slash B then this is just an HTML template so if we go now and um, switch over to run mode yeah we can see that Fred is now in uh, bold case so what we've shown in this video here is how the template can be um, how the HTML that the view box renders can be generated dynamically by merging JSON data uh, into a template the template itself is just um, HTML with placeholders uh, for uh, for the data. But all the concepts that we showed in the first video of A5-item and A5-value um, all apply. So um, again the ability to generate the template, to generate the HTML on the fly by merging data from a data source into a template is a very powerful aspect of the Viewbox control. In a previous video we showed how the HTML that the view box renders can be generated by merging data into a template but the data that we used the JSON object was a simple uh, JSON object it wasn't an array of data so let's go now and take a look at what happens when you have an array of data that you're moving that you're merging into the template so we'll go ahead here and we'll create a new view, a new view box and then we'll go over to the view box properties and set the data source to uh, data and then we'll choose um, uh, static JSON and we'll basically go here and get some sample data so here we can see that we have now we have an array of objects so each item in the array has got first name last name city and state so now we'll go ahead uh, and go to our layout and we'll use the genie now to get started quickly so we'll go ahead here and just choose our controls and click OK now and then if we look at the template we can see that the template is just the individual placeholders over there so if we go ahead now and we run it we'll see that the template basically um, is iterated over for each item uh, in the array but we just get this um, a sort of unformatted listed of list of data here basically there's the first record and then there's the next record starting over there so it's not organized in any type of um, of structure it doesn't look like a list for example so let's go back now uh, over to uh, design mode and we'll go back to the genie and now what we're going to do is we're going to take this data over here and wrap it in a special container so we'll go over here there and we'll choose containers and then we're going to go here and choose a list row container so what that's going to do is wrap this uh, these controls in a special container you can see now we have a special container shown over there and if we go look at the template that um, Alpha has generated you can see that it's put in a uh, template and it's auto automatically put in 
um, an, an item called underbar uh, AA row and uh, it hasn't currently specified any value over there and uh, and here's our, our basic template and each row is now in a div so that it looks like a row in a list so if we go ahead now and run it we can see now we have basically uh, the data looking like it's in it's in a, uh, a list control and you can see also that when I click on a particular row it shows as highlighted so if we go back now to the builder and switch back to genie mode now we can see that this particular type of control this um, uh, list row container uh, specifies certain properties it tells us what class to apply to the div uh, when it's been selected <coughs> and it also basically specifies what value to assign to the view box control when uh, a row is selected so we'll go ahead here and say we'd like to assign the value of uh, last name and then if we'd like to give um, any type of event to the row click for example we can go to the items tab and here is the special item that was generated for us underbar underbar a uh, a a row and I can go here and say um, alert you clicked on and then let's go here and put in the value that the user clicked on which would be V so go ahead now and click OK and then let's go and run this view box and you can see now basically it says you clicked on roads so what we've done is in effect create a very simple uh, list control by using a view box by specifying data that's in the form of a JSON array so that the actual data here you can see is an array of objects and then we basically uh, automatically got certain behavior by just choosing in the builder that uh, these controls were wrapped in a list row container. Thanks very much for watching.